Good morning, y'all. What's up with the pin? I don't have the pin. I go to the I go to the emote page and the pin says pending, 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 pending. It's like it was supposed to be 36 hours and I did that last Thursday. That should have been done by yesterday, I would think. I don't even see those parts in my I don't have them. I just have my dope face on there. Tony, thanks for the sub. You're the man now, dog. What the hell, Rewiz? Does anyone else have them? Anyone else have any pin parts? I have zero pin parts. Sarah's got two pin parts. Man, that pin's going to be dope when it comes out, isn't it? All right, I'm going to pull up the... Uh... That's hilarious. I don't even have them. That's hilarious. I don't even have them. That's hilarious. I don't even have them. <laughs> Wrong channel. I'm trying to look at my at the uh at my support side over here. <laughs> good morning, Jesse. Oh, Jesse, Jesse's trying to do something here. Rich sticks, good morning. Look at all these. How cool is this pen gonna be when we get it done? Alright, let me figure out how to get there. The uh Twitch back end is just a pain in the you know what? Let's see. Back to Twitch. Dashboard. Evan, what's up? We got a hype train going. Thanks for the sub, Evan. You're the man. My alert didn't work. What's new around here? Like I said, it's going to be a shirt show today, gang. All right, where is this? Preferences. Affiliate. Emotes. Let's see. Pin 4 and pin 3 are approved. Pin 2 is pending. And pin 1 is pending. This is just asinine. They, they were all 4 pending just a minute ago. <laughs> so. That's hilarious. Don't they know? Like, that's only part of it. Like, we need the whole thing. Like, what's up with that? Redonky donk. Oh, good morning, y'all. How we living? We living good. All right, sorry. All right, just checking all checking all my stuffs. All right, um, it's pretty much Monday for here for me here, since I was gone most of yesterday and ever since like Friday afternoon I've been gone. So I'm trying to get trying to get ramped back up and like I feel like it's a complete shirt show. That's why I've 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 that's why I've titled this is like I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I'm just now getting my week planned out. So I'll be I'll be doing some work on this. Um I've got some fun stuff stuff to show on stream. Um I'm gonna embarrass Sarah here in a minute uh for the letter she sent me. Um we'll do that. We had a great trip um to disney we went to disney world for those who don't know um i left um friday we got there like friday night at like seven went to hollywood studios all day saturday from open to close went to animal, King animal kingdom all day sunday from open to close and then got up monday morning and drove home so it's like I've been, I just been running and I got, a, I got some work done on Friday, like while we were driving, my wife drove and I was able to do some work and finish refill and things like that. I can do that in the car. And then Monday I did a little bit more, just trying to catch up on email, <clears throat> but my email, like my task list is just gigantic right now. Um, I have a bunch of things to do. I'm trying to sort it out and I'm not there at all. Like I had to get up this morning and write the giveaway post, right? That's a short post. I know what I'm giving away, but it's still like a task I have to complete, right? So it's just a matter of getting back into that routine. It's gonna take me till like Wednesday or Thursday, something on paper, thanks for the Twitch Prime. Yeah, I don't own any dickies. I would do, I need some popovers. Anyone have a good source on popovers? Um, I, short shorts would not be my brand. <clears throat> Oh, plaid plaid shirts are my brand. So, um, so yeah, like I'm feeling like it's a complete shirt show around here these days. This morning, at least, a comb over. I'm working on it. Look, I got the, I got like the great wave of Kanagawa going this morning. I don't know what's happening. It's raining here. My hair's wet. So who knows? <laughs> Good morning, Thunder Viking. But yeah, we had a great trip, had a great time. The crowds were absolutely insane. Like those two days were enough. 
and it's probably like going to be another four years before we go again. Like it's just a lot. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of crowds. It's a lot of exhaustion. Um, it's just a lot of all those things. So like from Friday, like two days of park, Saturday, Sunday, home Monday, that should cover us for about four years. Like I could not do that on the regular, like once a year would be far too much for just those two days at the parks, like too much money, too much crowds. Like it's insane. Like there were several like of the rides that we just couldn't do. Cause the, the line, like the park opens and the line starts at like 120 minutes. It's like, it's like, I'm not, I'm not up for that. When do I arrive in Baltimore Thursday afternoon? Uh, ish. Let me look. When is that? Is that next week? I am just, I'm out of it right now. Oh, Miracle Workers. I haven't seen that. I'll have to look at that. Is Baltimore next week? We're going to find out right now. <laughs> I don't have to go this week, do I? Please don't let me have to go this week. Okay, February 27th. Yeah, I get there at like one o'clock in the afternoon, on the tw on Thursday, so I'm coming in Thursday for this one. Since I'm since I'm doing the working, so good. I'm glad it's not this week. That's how like I don't know like I'm a little bit lost on time time frame right now is is messing with me. So maybe we can have uh, maybe we can have lunch again, Jesse, on Thursday afternoon if you're gonna be in. Hi level one hype train emote, choo choo. I want my pen choo-choo. Where's my pen choo-choo? Uh, what's up with the new emote? That's so dumb. I got half a pen. Um, I was... Uh, oh, nice. I'll look at that, Evan. I was uh, in line at... So we took a lot of pictures at Disney, obviously. And I was in line at Toy Story Mania. And they had this one... Uh, whoa, my alert's still going. Sorry. It's a good alert, though. I approve of it. Y'all got to tell me that thing's still going. I Like, I'm staring at it, but I don't even notice it that it's still going. Um, so I was sitting in line at Toy Story Mania, which was a cool ride. We did that one twice. I dominated, by the way. I won I won both rounds. Um, it's like a shooter, like a 3D shooter thing. It's pretty cool. Um, and they had this weird, they had this weird um, light room hallway when you're in, just in the queue. And... I was like, oh, the light in here is wild. And we were stopped. And I took a picture just randomly. I was like, damn, that's a Yeah, it's one year on the ride shooting things. But they have two of them. They have uh, the Buzz Lightyear one in Magic Kingdom. Then they have the Toy Story Mania one in Hollywood Studios. And I took that picture. And I was like, oh, that's a cool picture. I was like, you know what this would good, look good as? It would be that little tiny that little tiny Twitter logo. It's like, I've been wanting a new one that it probably will. I probably won't keep that very long. It's like, I'll probably want like a pen one or something more related to like the pen addicts type stuff. But I thought it would be perfect for that little tiny circle on Twitter. Um, would make a good avatar. So we'll try that out for a while. I love the color. The color really stands out. Um, it, it looks pretty neat. So that was all it was. It was totally random. And I, I had the, like you don't want to expand that picture too much because you'll see I'll have the 3D glasses on on top of these glasses, so I really look like more of a tool than I normally look like um, in that picture if you expand if you embiggen it. But I figured it'd look good pretty small. Yeah, it stands out. I like it. Love those colors too. Um, so Evan Max. DM'd me this morning saying the roach rings are out in Japan, the new uh, 600 colors. <clears throat> and Evan, um, I have an Amazon Japan account that actually works for things sometimes. Like sometimes it'll say you cannot order this and sometimes it just lets me place an order. So I'm going to try that this afternoon. I'll report back um, just to see if I can. Yeah, if you do, if you embiggen it, it's not as cool. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so definitely keep that one small it works for the small size logo <laughs> but yeah so I'll, I'll i'll try an amazon jp uh we're going to talk about this stuff i'm actually my pockets are filled and i even have another pin down here we're going to talk about right great it ruins it ruins the uh it ruins the idea if you embiggen that picture like it's it's tailor-made for the nickel sized avatar that you see on your screen or the dime sized avatar that you see on the screen. Don't embiggen it. 
take one or two months to ship. Yeah. We'll poke around and see. Um, I hope Jet Pins gets them. Someone will get them. They, it seems like a wide enough re release. We shouldn't have too big of a problem getting them. I ho I'm crossing my fingers, but I'll uh, I'll see. I'm not gonna like overdo it, right? I'm not gonna like jump through all kinds of hoops. Like it's I'm not that desperate for it, but it would be cool. I would really like that. This stupid thing. I'm gonna keep refreshing these. I swear, when I launched the stream this morning, when I sent that tweet out, that all four of these emotes said pending. And now to how only have half of them is just dumb. Oh, I can finally see them now. Panatic Choo Choo Hype Griffin one. <laughs> like I didn't even I didn't even click anything. I just did that. Like I clicked the emote button and that's what it filled out. Panatic Choo Choo Hype something. Hype Griffin. <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about stuff. I got stuff to talk about. I got a really cool letter that I'm gonna share the idea of it with don't worry Sarah I'm not going to embarrass you completely I'm not going to share the contents of the letter but I want to share the idea of this letter um because I found it very like super super interesting um and like a really thoughtful like perfect this is like the perfect letter this is like an example of a perfect letter for um for those so like um, one thing that I've done in the few times that I've, I've sent out letters, um, if I remember to do it and my writing is long enough, um, oh yeah, I'm totally not writing you back, Sarah. That just, I mean, book that. So just to, just to do this real quick so what Sarah did is it's a three-page letter right three-page letter and essentially like every paragraph or section has a different ink and a different pen and a different nib and a different ink color and each section she tells me what she wrote with like this is a dope idea like if you write a long letter, you should consider this, right? I know a lot of people do this, but I haven't gotten one of these in a long time. And I like doing that. Even if it's even if it's like a three paragraph letter, use three different pens, three different inks, fill that in there. Like that's super cool. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that Sarah did is Bork and Bork, thank you for the sub. You like to make the recipient guess. That doesn't surprise me alert some so the other thing Sarah did um, well she did a lot she did a lot of awesome things in this letter is um, she told me about her background and her life and her coming up with like you know you know like Sarah and I have never met but we have like have a lot in common like the area we grew up in our certain sports fandoms um, our pins things like that so she was like telling me the background um, in like her life and like how it went is like, and she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I rambled on about my life. It's like, I want to hear that. Like, that's what I actually, most of my letters, like people, you know, like want to like share their backgrounds and like, it's the connection that we have that way. And like, I appreciate that. And it takes a lot for someone to like put those things down on the page. So like, I appreciate that even more, right? Because it's not the easy thing to write. Um, and it's super cool. So, um, that was great. <clears throat> third thing she did is she sent a separate letter for Mike within this letter so there's an envelope with Mike on it that's sitting on my desk um that it's funny because Sarah that's the second one I got of those this week alone of a letter to me and in a different envelope to Mike to give to Mike when I see him in Atlanta so that was super cool so I have that I have that sitting there um Thanks, Michael. New shirt. New shirt game. Like, I mean, you wouldn't know it's a new shirt because everything I wear looks like this. Mike's is just two index cards. <laughs> That's fine. Um, and, you know, and she tells me about her pin journey. I can get through. I can. I love seeing these different inks that she uses. I was like, wow, Lamy Coral is not as terrible as I thought it was. <laughs> that was one of the thoughts I had on your letter. <laughs> I was like, wow, Lamy Coral is not horrible. 
um and um so yeah that was cool um and then like the like i'm on the fourth thing fourth thing is i got stickers like and then like she told me about the stickers and like where the stickers came from um and you know i know one of them is totally going on my laptop and i'm going to give the others to mike um and you know they're stuck on there with washi tape and washi tape is a great way to keep you know anything you put in a letter um keep it you know attached without damaging the paper or the sticker right so there was some cool washi tape it's um oh mike stickers okay good so i can keep those sweet more for me um then i won't give those to mike i'll keep them for myself um so yeah like i just wanted to talk about like letter writing you know in general is like like you don't have to do any of this right just see the uh the instagram but you don't, you don't have to do anything this like this to to like write an awesome letter right like i certainly don't like i'm a horrible letter writer like i wrote someone a letter i wrote someone a postcard last week like you saw my review the venetian card i sent that to someone that's the first letter i've written in i don't know probably a year <clears throat> but what sarah did is like that's everything i would want to do if i was writing like a really really great letter to someone so i thought it was super so thank you sarah thank you for doing that it was very cool um I started to say that Instagram post I made this morning, that was another type of letter that I get. Like, it was a postcard. It was like, you know, a hundred words just saying, you know, hey, you know, here's this cool thing I did. And it was like really cool. Like, it's like that's just as cool and unique as what, what Sarah did, like with this letter, like this back cover of a not code notebook that someone has just used and beaten to death and sent it as a postcard. Like, that's pretty cool. Like, I really appreciated that. So, Doug, oh crap, I just closed my screen. So, yeah, that was, uh, I just wanted to point those things out. All right, let's check the emotes again. Yep. So, you know, I'll get things like that, especially during uh, February for uh, Inco Rimo. If anyone's participating, my address is on on the website. Um, I check my my mailbox once or twice a week and and grab all the stuff out of it. So um, I stole the postal slip this week. Like I've ex I've told you about those. Uh, the my post office is you know basically a little a little double wide. So they have the when you get the special s slip to like, hey, you need to pick up the thing. I actually stole that. I stole that last time. I had so much stuff in my in my mailbox that I just grabbed it all out, and that slip was stuck in between. So I need to bring that back to them this week. Sorry about that, uh, Bolingbroke Post Office. So, all right. Um. Uh, the yellow card, the long yellow card, but on the back, they just like tick off. There's like a row of ticks. Oh, yeah, I forgot you know this canine play. There's just a row of the tick boxes that they've that they put in. So all the current ones. Um so yeah, it was the big yellow it was the long yellow card. Sorry about that, post office. Alright. I got a big package here. Oh wow, look at this address. I didn't even see this. Man, that's fancy. I only saw this side of the package, which is just, you know, your standard stickers and labels. Um, but this is the, this is my package from Choosing Keeping. So this is where Mike went to the uh, uh, Platinum event and got like the swag bag. So they t said they were going to send me the swag bag too, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, Mike didn't tell me what was in it on the podcast last week. Um, you think there's a Curidos in it? I doubt it, right? There's no way there's a pen and a Curidos in here. I wouldn't think so. One can only hope, but... Nah, no way. I'm gonna go with no way. No zero percent. But I will say, it's a it's a, it's a sizable sizable uh, box and package. So, you know, one can only hope. But I don't expect it. There's no way. They probably would have told me if they were gonna send me that. They said they'd send me like the uh, like the gift the gift package um, from their event. So I thought that was pretty cool. Thinking about that swag just for the ink from Mount Fuji. You're going to say yes. Oh, now that would be cool if I got Mount Fuji ink. Great War Panda is going to say yes. This is a sizable box. Like, this box is no joke. So, like, this is big, this is big boy packaging right here. 
and it's full and it's heavy. So let's see what we got here. Should be a tote bag, platinum notebook, and ink cartridges. Spoilers. Hello. Get composted. Spoiler alert. I'm just kidding. I don't care. Spoiler alert right there. Jeez. Yeah, it's a Curidos brochure. Maybe I can uh, respell it. I will say, choosing keeping packaging, money. Really, really tight packaging. Wow. So, we're going into, like, it's all wrapped up. Like, look at this. Look at all their, uh, I guess those are doves. Are those doves that are flying all over? Look at this sparkly one in the middle. Disco dove in the middle. There's your show title, Disco Dove. <laughs> Rewizzles, you're getting closer. I like the Disco Dove sticker. Nice. It's choosing, key, key, choosing keeping stationary in their address. So yeah, this is like their package uh, sticker, but like I got five of them. All right, I got a letter on the front. Let me read it to myself first in case there's anything I shouldn't be reading. Uh, man, more birds. Big fans. Choosing keepings. Bigging. New guests. Just newspaper in the middle. All right. I guess I should just read this. Dear Brad, kindly accept this small token of my appreciation for your generous and support of choosing keeping via the pen addict. I especially enjoy you and Mike's humorous, measured, and light touch discussing all the various pen world topics. I understand why your following is so strong. <laughs> I hope to meet you in the future. In the meantime, enjoy the Mount Fuji cartridges. Yeah. Only the best for platinum pens. Sincerely, from London, Julia, choosing keeping nice they're so nice that was very nice of them like they're like you're awesome and we totally see why right I'm telling you what a plus on the packaging choosing keeping like this wrapping paper is like the thick, the thick stuff this is like the tomoe 68 of the uh of packaging like, like this isn't no 52 GSM's Tomoe. This is like the 68. That's the heavy stuff. All right, looks like get composted was 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 pretty much right. This looks pretty cool. We're gonna we're gonna go straight. Look, more more sticker doves. I need just like a dis. I need a disco. I need a disco dove for my laptop choosing keeping. I'll put a disco dove on there. So like these are the smaller ones. Pretty dope. Um man. I'm going home and inking this up. Light touch. Yeah, that was pretty nice. That was a very Canadian thing to say. Sorry. Legit. So this is the Mount Fuji blue black. I'm pretty hyped about this. 100th anniversary of memorial package. So what's the idea around about this? Oh, here it is. It's on the box. Contains 5% of natural water sourced from the base of Mount Fuji. That's awesome. I got two boxes. I should totally give away a box, right? These are going straight into a Nakaya. So, you know, your standard platinum cartridge. Nothing special here. Um, I think I need to give one of these away. That would be a cool giveaway item. Potable. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to try. Um, 
yeah, thank you, choosing keeping. Like, that's all I need. Like, but there's a whole stack of other stuff here, including said tote bag. This notebook looks ridiculous. All right. All right, Curidas swag. <laughs> Curidas brochure. So, I'm guessing every, yeah, every f marketing photograph of the Curidas doesn't show the backside with the, with the nib extended. Not one. So you can't see what's really happening on the back side of this pen. It's not photographed. I see you work in platinum. You got us there, platinum. You got us on that one. But you forget, in the end, people got to use this stuff. Okay. This notebook is sick. So I don't know what you call this cover. It's kind of like marbled, but it's it's a paper not really textured but um it's got like a sparkly weave in it it's hard to see in there and you know uh cloth corners cloth spine um speckled end papers you would like this notebook tony because it's lined you like lines tony likes lines um this paper's thick like it's a this is a pretty heavyweight paper it is extra cool. Like I could totally design a notebook like this and the platinum logo on it. That's uh that top margin is ridiculous a little bit. Um, this is, a, this is like, um, this feels more like a book than a notebook. Like that's how thick the cover feels, right? It feels like a book. You just look like grab off the shelf at a library. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll see how it handles ink. This paper, this feels like an uncoated paper. Like, I will test it out and let you know. Do they sell this? Because this is pretty outstanding. Um, it's extremely well done. Like, it, it looks even better in person because the little threading in here that you really can't see on here is, um, it's shiny. Almost like a glittery, glittery type of look to it. I'll see if I can catch a picture later in good lighting at home. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very sparkly, sparkly thread. Um, more doves. Also, thoughts on Rodeo Notebooks? I love them. I love their paper. They get a little bit ivory, creamy color to me, a little bit too much sometimes. So the color gets there. So that's why I prefer the pads because I can get the white paper background. Oh, dang. Okay. Don't buy the web notebook. It's trashed. I haven't used that in a while. So this is, huh? All right. So this is a set of cards of postcards, but there's only two. These two have, okay. So let's look at this. So here's the platinum factory, 1969 and then 2020 um, and these are done in collaboration with choosing keeping they have the choosing keep me logo on the back and then wow this is crazy we'll go through this pretty quickly so this is an, an entire set of postcards like this one had a lot of these have entire stories on the background right so this set was built this is uh shinichi nakata an entrepreneur an entrepreneur and visionary so that's platinum's founder and then it just like goes on like all these cards have a story to tell farewell to ink bottles i guess that's when they introduced a cartridge uh here's some maquille artwork on there like all and all of these have a story to tell this is like a little mini booklet in postcard form right so oh man look at this picture that's a cool picture um here's a nice so this one's actually a standard postcard right i can write on this one cool platinum logo the old blue ink bottles the standard blue ink bottles blue black ink bottles oh this was the invitation that choosing keeping sent out for the event 
So that was uh, that was that. I don't know what this is. Do y'all know what this one is? Was that? Oh, we're gonna have to read this one. This is a very long one. I'm not gonna read this on here. But this says, "What color is blue black ink?" I can I respect that question a lot. All right, here's some of their rippled pens. What did we decide we call these? There's a name for that. Um, not stacked. What do they call these? <laughs> uh, there's a name for it. I always forget the name of it. I just call them ribbed. I mean, for obvious reasons. Oh, maybe I should read the back, huh? <laughs> Gathered. Thank you. God, why can't I ever remember that? But they call this uh, a distinctive ribbed profile. Like they don't, they don't actually technically have a name for it on the back. Interesting. So here's another like old classic design. Oh, this is from the 3776 launch. It looks like. Here's a nib shot. Namisu has a new Kickstarter. Yeah, link it. Yeah, it's definitely for her pleasure. This was this is the platinum platinum, right? Nope. Yeah, the platinum platinum. <laughs> that was it. Platinum platinum. Oh, this is a cool shot. That's like nib stamping out of the sheets. So this is like an entire little book here. All right, I'll check that out. Um, I'll check that out in just a second, Tony. Um, here's a little feed filling system shot. Oh, here's their koi. Is this koi celluloid? Like, and all of these are branded, like, in, done in conjunction with, like, choosing keeping. So, I guess other stores that had it, had this done, also maybe got sets of these, too. So, that's pretty neat. And there's, like, the, here's the final one. Japanese celluloid. So, that's really cool. So, that was, like, a whole, what was that, 20 cards, maybe? That's pretty awesome. A minimalist two-in-one pen made from grade five titanium. Okay, we'll check this out. I'm almost done. And then the tote bag, which I love. Just a good classic tote. That's a neat logo, right? That's pretty cool. I love that. Blue, black ink. I mean, that's on brand for me. That's it. Choosing, keeping... That's a pretty um, that's a pretty big get, I guess, for choosing keeping. Like to have the platinum in store and have the platinum co-branded merch. Um, that's pretty tight. So thank you, choosing keeping, and thank you for sending me two boxes of these cartridges. <laughs> that's a good point, artifact. So I like color too. But yes, most of them don't. Good morning, Kimmy. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll give one of these away just because it'd be the cool thing to do. This notebook, I can't get over this notebook. I, I will definitely test it out and see if it's fountain pen friendly, but not until I get um, the blue black Mount Fuji ink inked up. So <clears throat> we'll see. It'll go in an in an Akaya, probably my. Ao Tamanuri one, my classic, my first one. Ooh, maybe Kikyo Blue. Damn, which one? probably probably the first, probably the first one I said. So thank you, choosing keeping that was dope. Yeah, I say I I'm like one of the I'm like hello fellow kids guy. I'm definitely that guy. Lamome notebooks good. I've never heard of those, so I'm gonna go with no. Just kidding. I, I have no idea. I say it mostly, I say tight mostly to make fun of my kids when they say it. All right, let's look at this. Uh, let's refresh the emote page first. Still pending. Still pending. All right, um, I'm gonna pull up this Kickstarter. That was bright. Let's, let's pop it up on the screen here. 
All right, Namisu. So this just dropped 20 minutes ago. I'm not going to play the video. So it looks like the same traditional back end design of their base, the hex, hex barrel. Um, are they still using Bach? Which is fine. They just got in so much trouble last time. Um, and it's a front end swap. I think the 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 rollerball ballpoint um, looks pretty good. Oh look, they're using uh, who's this back pocket? Also UK brand. <laughs> Tight still a hundred percent part of your vocab. I use it frequently. I use stoked too. Um, I mean, it looks great. The only thing I didn't look at was the price, so now I need to scroll back up. But knowing Namisu, the price is fair. Oh, a bronze barrel. That's pretty nice. That definitely looks like a Bach nib. Oh, yeah, they have titanium. That's definitely Bach. If you're ordering this, I would get the titanium nib. Rich Sticks, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks for the bits. Uh, what's my price point here? <clears throat> One early bird, 38 pounds, 50 bucks. I mean, I say dope a lot too. Wow, this this is really lighting me up on when I'm sitting close to that screen. It's so bright. It's really dark in here. Like we're in a we're in complete monsoon here for like the next three days. So it's really dark in this room. So these lights are bright. Um, aluminum early bird, fifty dollars. I mean, it's a good price. Looks like a cool pen. Seems like a good price. Uh, the bronze is only what seventy three dollars. I mean, for that price, and you get two front end sections. Seems good to me. I mean, I'm not I'm not interested in backing just because I don't need that pen, but it looks like a good pen. Speaking of Kickstarters, Mantra emailed me like right after last week's, <laughs> right after last week's, uh, oh, there's my uh, emote setting. So I didn't, I forget I was doing this on screen. So yeah, this is where it shows stuff. This is the back, this is the back end magic. This is where the magic happens, except it takes like a half an hour to find it. I had to go look up where to find this page to find the emote setting so I could upload them. Like I had to go through the FAQ and do searches to find this page. Twitch, man. <clears throat> so, seems like a good pen. Like, if you're into that and want to try that. I mean, the the, the the Ixion that Mike and I got it is really well built. I just got a crummy, crummy nib. Like, I did not like my nib on mine. And that was when Bach was having. And it's not a Namisu fault. It's not Namisu's fault. They just got caught up in it, you know. There was a time when when Bach was not uh, was not doing was not doing as good a job as they're doing now. So I like the Nova Studio that I have. Yeah, they make a good pen. There is no doubt they make a good pen. All right, speaking of someone who makes good pens, this guy. I finally got a real production release spoke pen. <laughs> For the first time ever, one that's mine and mine alone. Um, so I can finally stop using my beater spoke pen. Although it's still pretty cool, I'll still continue to use it. It's got a different refill in it. But I got the cyan. So I've never had a release, uh, a release quality spoke pen. I got the cyan with the. Uh, oh, Brian's gonna yell at me. The the sandblasted uh, grip section, titanium grip section. <sighs> I am so happy with this pen, I can't even tell you. So I have the, um, 
I use lavender black as my number one DX refill. 0.38 lavender black. That's what I have in here. So we'll have a restock here hopefully pretty soon. We're just getting past Chinese New Year to get our manufacturing back on back in queue. So we'll start people are chomping at the bit for these again. And we've just been delayed, you know, timing wise with Chinese New Year. Hopefully, I don't know if we're gonna get a uh, coronavirus hit. Uh, we haven't heard yet uh, about any delays. So we'll um, we'll let you know if we're gonna get hit with many more delays. So um, I also have my first, Brian actually gave me, got me some good stuff too. So I have my first spoke, the gray uh, spoke pencil model four with the inverted grip. So I'm shocked at how much I like this. Like it looks cool. I didn't know if it was for me. I prefer the the standard straight grip, but this grip is it kind of like it looks like a rocket now. It's really cool. Oh, thanks, Rich. I have not. Who should I send it to? I should send it to Fig Boot. Would he? I don't know who would review. Who would review? what good non fountain pen reviewers are there that would be cool like gadget reviewers i would rather send it to them not that i wouldn't trust like fig boot to do it but i want to get this in someone's more of someone's wheelhouse but this is the first this is the gray color anodization which is the first one i've had in this color so like i'm finally getting some stuff of my own from the the company that i'm a partner with <laughs> Oh, Figboot does awesome stuff. I just don't know if this is his style of pen, you know. Oh, yeah, Mike. Yeah, Mike would be good. All right. So those are cool, but this is what I really wanted to show y'all. And, um, yeah, Mike would. Mike has one, so just tell him to review it. I sent Mike one of the, one of the OG ones when we launched the Kickstarter. So tell him he needs to review that. Um, this is the one I'm going to get in trouble for. So let me hide this a little bit. I'm going to show it to you. Don't worry. I'm going to show it to you. Um, but Brian sent me a prototype. So as we've talked about on this stream before, I'll talk about stuff and I'll show you stuff that doesn't mean they're going to exist. Okay. Are we clear? Y'all promise me you understand. Like if I show you this thing. You don't yell at me if it doesn't become a real product. So everyone take that pledge this morning. I will not yell at Brad if what he is about to show me does not turn into a real product. Okay. This is like pre-alpha. This is like pre-alpha design. I am really, for a first pass at this, I am very pleased with this um there's no name for it so whatever i call it i'm, I'm going to call it a name just because we need to refer to it as something um so this is a spoke mini so it is a capped mini pen that fits parker style refills so i have the jetstream sxr 07 in it um so it has a full cap size. It has a full grip section. It has a smooth barrel because so it can post deeply. So this is your writing, your writing size. Okay. So we're tweaking this, working it out. It fits the, uh, it fits the auto gel refill any Parker style refill. This is the Jetstream SXR. Like I said, I had the Odo in it earlier. We would probably ship it with a conical tip refill because it looks better, right? That designs better. Um, the magnet, we have stainless steel piece on the back of the end of the barrel to hold the magnet on there. It's re it's a really strong magnet. We have a new clip manufacturer where these are like really really stout um so yeah it's not a pressure it's not a um you know just like a slide on it's it's a magnet lock and it's strong so that's its writing 
I, it's hard. I know it's hard for me to show you on here, but it's a very comfortable, not quite full length writer, but close. Um, the the magnet is super tight, so yeah, it's like take our full size cap, take our full size grip section, and we won't do anything weird on this section because the cap will be continually going on and off. And if it's a pocket pin, we don't want to have grooves in it to get more lint in it or something like that. You know, get it'll get more dirty. We assume than something like this, right? Than these than these things. <sighs> I um. I'm thrilled with it. You know, we're dabbling with making it maybe like a centimeter longer, you know, something like that. Yeah, so magnet post, magnet cap, double sided. It, I mean, it's not coming off. Like, like it's really strong. So, I mean, I think we have to do this. Like, that's the discussion Brian and I are having right now. It's like, it's good enough. It's not good enough. It's great enough to have to be made, I feel. So we'll see. Like, we don't have pricing yet. We don't have final design yet. So this is why we can talk about these things, you know, get some, get some ideas. Is the size comparable to the Pocket 6? It's longer, for sure. Oh, capped. I'll have to see posted. I think it's it's longer. I'm gonna say without having it here, it's longer capped and shorter posted. Does that make sense, Thor? I think I, offhand I would say that. So this position it will be longer than the pocket six, and this position it'll be shorter. Right, grip diameter. I. It's on the spoke website. It's our standard spoke grip. I don't know it off the top. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's listed. It's listed on spokedesign.com on the site. All the um, barrel dimensions are listed. It's that exact grip. So yeah, price, no freaking clue. Literally no idea. Post, posted, I'm almost certain it's shorter but I could be mistaken. It's at least in the ballpark. Is it longer posted than when cap or the same? That's a good question. I will tell you, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. It's shorter capped by like 10 millimeters. It's shorter capped. I'm assuming these are five millimeter grids. One, two, three. No, it's shorter by five millimeters. One, two, three. Damn it. One, two, three, four, five. Five millimeters shorter. If I think these are this is a five millimeter grid. So yeah, we don't know what we're gonna do yet. It'll be a while. This is a later this year type of thing. Um, like I said, alpha, alpha stage, but I mean, I think we're both Brian and I are pretty convinced it's good. Just needs, you know, those final finishing touches, you know, to where you get this prototype style into something that's as good looking as this finished. Um, it'll probably be standard barrel colors like silver and black and then different cap colors. It won't be like full barrel anodization like these. I'm certain. This is just in the talking phases. That's our initial idea. Because this will be continually used and abused, right? So it's going to have to look good being beat up a little bit, right? It's an EDC pin. It's going to be capped and uncapped consistently. If you get a color on there, it's just going to look worse and worse and worse, which is kind of okay. Like if you know what you're getting and assume that, I think a lot of customers wouldn't understand that. So they would not be happy with that. Full titanium barrel. Sure. You know, and then we could do, we'll do caps and caps in different colors. So yeah, we'll see. I'll let y'all know if I get in trouble with this. I found something weird on my desk this morning. Um, related to the spoke pen 
and my desk is a shirt show again this is when uh yeah love it when edc pins got beat up like that's like that's what you do right like i wouldn't care like if my orange anodized pocket pin got destroyed right but i think some customers wouldn't understand that concept and that's okay like that's not a knock that's just like how do we choose to present the product um so my desk from disney and unloading backpacks and pulling all, out all kinds of crap my desk was crap this morning so i discovered this why is my member chip magnetic yeah i'll bring it to baltimore how does this happen anyone aluminum core maybe is that what's giving it the weight I, <laughs> I was sitting there i picked up the pen and this comes with it i was like how does this happen metal cores for the weight of them yeah because they have some substantial weight like they feel cool but um okay so there there you go yeah i'm tracking you all with these chips right it's my secret tracker built into all these chips poker chips often have iron cores for weight there you go so y'all know i'm if you have a uh if you have a membership from me that i'm actually secretly tracking you and listening into all your conversations so yeah i discovered that this morning so that's a thing <laughs> um evan yeah this will travel with me everywhere now because i'm testing it right i took it to disney world like that was my like one of my carry tests um for um for like our initial run of this pen, right? <clears throat> what does it mean when someone says a nib is over polished? So there is a feedback on the writing surface of the nib and people can round it and round it and round it and round it to where it's like so smooth, it's no longer enjoyable to write with. Is that a fair way to explain it? Someone who might know better than me? But that's what I think of when I think of a nib is over polished. That means that it's gotten so smooth and rounded that it's no longer like in a perfect writing experience for some people would that make sense you touch a pen and skull tattoo in your arm and call it all the pen addicts what are you talking about alexander what are you talking about so yeah if anyone has a better definition of over polish than me the chip you sent me last week is not magnetic it's from the same box yeah, it's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Oh, Harry Potter. So see, I didn't I didn't read I didn't read or watch the Harry Potter stuff. And Tyler's only like moderately interested and Elizabeth is zero interested. Tyler's watched all the movies, but he's not like a continual continually into it. So is that bad parenting? It feels kinda like bad parenting. I tried. Totally tried. Because my dad read all the books, so he's got all the books to give to the kids. They're just like, that's cool. What else? Yeah, so like I like feedback from my fountain pen nibs. So I wouldn't enjoy an overpolished nib. Audio books are the best. I could get behind that. A um, couple more things I brought to show for show and tell today. I just tried it on a multi-tool in the fridge. Yeah, there's a magnet in the spoke pin. Like, the, it, the it's a magnet clip. Right? God, it's 20 years old now? That's hard to believe. Uh, that audiobooks is a great idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Evan. Um, yeah, more show and tell. So a listener of the Pen Addict, uh, let me pull this up real quick so I get the name right. Listener of the Pen Addict went shopping for me at Kino Kaniya. God dang it, not that. Um, uh, 
the, um, the OKB general election results that we discussed. And let me pull this up. So the OKB general election for the pins. And we talked about um, this pin in the number two slot that we didn't have any idea what it was. Um, so a reader went and got me one. So it's the Zebra Olin, O-L-E-N. Um, so it's a nice looking like it reminds me of like the the uniball signo rt1 even though the the cap and the clicker is a little more integrated than the regular knock on the rt1 but it's got a rubberized grip in in the front um you know standard split in the middle of the barrel and it is the zemulsion ink that zebra uses which is similar to the jet stream so jet streams number one in the in the contest over there with its hybrid ballpoint ink and this is the zemulsion hybrid ballpoint ink from zebra which has not gained popularity over here in the u.s at all um it's nice but like i've already had it glob when i was writing i was writing a bunch of notes with this pen last night and it has it'll it'll string like a ballpoint if you lift it sometimes right you'll get a little spider web um it doesn't have excuse me, it doesn't happen a lot, but it'll just like spider web a little bit. And um, that's not a great experience. Like if you're using like a point, these are 0.5 millimeter refills, black. Um, it's really good, it's really nice. I mean, it's not really, I, I wouldn't put it number two on this list. So. It could be murder red, Evan. Murder red would be better. Iron blue, camouflage green, and murder red. Let's just go with that. Overpolishing is the pen equivalent of ice skating when you don't know how to skate. I don't know what that means. I mean, from the polisher standpoint, I get it. But from a writing standpoint, I'm trying to translate into that a, a feel. Like, how do you translate that into a feel? If they come to the US, the names could change, that's true. So yeah, this is a good pen. Like, it's nowhere. Uh, no grip on this pen, Sarah? This one, oh, no grip, like it keeps slipping and, keep it slipping and sliding, like for the ice skating thing? Maybe, yeah, the ice skating analogy. Yeah, like I said, there's no, um, there's no feedback, so it just slides and glides. But I guess technically someone would like that, right? It's tend to use it tends to be used as a negative term, right? Over polishing. Less control, maybe. Makes sense. So yeah, I mean, it, this is good. Like I'll review this for the blog just so it's on there. Uh, since it was, it's clearly so popular in Japan, but like, it's, I'm not like raving about it. Like it's perfectly fine. It's very cool. I don't, it comes up, it comes up mentioned with baby, with baby's bottoms. This is that Olin, the zebra Olin that finished in that OKB, uh, annual report where they do the, uh, it finished number two right behind the jet stream and right ahead of this uh, Sarasa clip. So, and I, when we were discussing this on the podcast, I had no idea what this pen was and uh, a listener picked this up for me at Kino Kaniya. So, it's cool. It's got the Zemulsion ballpoint ink in it from Zebra. So, they also sent me this pen from their Kino Kaniya trip. This is also a Zebra. This one's called the Fortia, Fortia, F-O-R-T-I-A. And it's like a, a skinny aluminum barrel. And it also uses the emulsion refill. So the, again, 0.5 black mil, five millimeter, 0.5 millimeter Z emulsion. What's funny about these two pins is like this barrel is thick enough to hold, it's a skinny barrel, but it's thick enough to hold like a standard refill. 
and even though both of these refill ink types are the same the refills are different i believe which i find to be a little bit weird i guess they're pretty much the same they're just stamped differently so you can't really see that so they just have a different stamping i guess is all this one the one in the thin pins it seems to be a little bit thinner diameter oh it's definitely thinner which i find weird because i think this the wider one would fit in here let's swap them and see yeah so why would zebra zebra's using a lesser capacity refill in this pen than the other one even though the refills are interchangeable which is kind of weird to me it, it's a terrible looking web page i mean it's cool but it's it's a lot i wouldn't say terrible but yeah i just found this weird it's the exact theoretically the exact same refill but the one in this barrel is thinner and will have less ink capacity than this refill so they've manufactured two different size refills and uh, they both fit the same pin or, or they they're they both fit the same style of pin so whatever i just that's one of those things that that bothers me that i just find completely weird so yeah there you go it doesn't feel quite as skinny as like the it's i guess it's maybe along the lines of the shalana fountain pen if you've ever held one of those which are crazy thin this doesn't feel too bad like i could use this i don't normally love thin pens i like them okay i could totally use this because it's got a little bit of weight to it like it feels good when you're using it it's solid it's not just like air yeah maybe i'll send this to you sarah so you can compare it with the shalana even though it's like 0.5 millimeter ballpoint which is teeny tiny teeny tiny handwriting but it you could at least get a comparison picture the shalana is such a weird pen but it has people who just love it i've never done anything yeah like i've seen mics and uh i've gotten like he'll go if we're at a pen show together he'll go find some weird shalana and come back with it and he's like hey look what i found like he's a shalana collector but it feels good like it's substantial enough it's just thin so all right all right last thing today and i'll get y'all to help me with this um is i got a i have a monstrous amount of work to do so i go away for essentially three days you know two half days and two full days and i just get monstrously behind so i'm super super busy the whole rest of this week writing on stuff and trying to figure out stuff um uh, Karen Dash pens for one. Like I got the stuff I need to to start building those out. So stay tuned for that information. Um, but what I need to do today is do the top five update for tomorrow. So like my Tuesday tool set top five theme is working for me. But I want y'all to decide. Go to my top five pens page, and what do y'all want me to do next? Like what's the consensus? Do y'all care? I mean I know you don't care, but. Is there anything you want me to do next? I don't, I've done the blue black inks, which is all the way towards the bottom. And then I did the very first one, which is the top five micro gel inks. And I'm gonna put dates on these that I updated. Like I've already updated the micro gel ink one. I will update that. Um, top five pens Tony thinks sucks. Give me those top five, Tony. So like the top five fountain pens under 50 maybe. Cause I think the Metropolitan's gonna move. The preppy might move just because Platinum's made some other cool things there. Like that's a candidate. The top five fountain pens from 50 to 100 is always my most hated list. It's really difficult. Like there's not much in there. Um, so yeah, maybe one of the fountain pen ones. Since I've done um, a standard pen and an ink. I haven't done a fountain pen yet so maybe maybe i'm thinking the one of the fountain pen categories fountain pens between 100 and 200 it's funny that list is getting harder because most of those base prices for like the platinum and the sailor have gone and the lamy 2000 and the 205 have all gone up 
right? Which makes something like the Leonardo, like you're saying, a very good candidate. Do the fountain pen one sequentially makes sense to do like the first, the low end. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know that it'll. That's a that's a tough call. I need to think about that more. I haven't done my official review of mine yet, and I actually have another one coming. And I'm actually going to order one of those, um, one of the new ones, the 366 ones. That's going to, I need to think about that more than today. That list, the 100 to 200 list. Because that one's going to be there. I just, this is a, the price, prices on every single one of these pens has gone up, right? Every single one of these has, has increased in price. Like the standard is the standards not even in this price point anymore, is it? Right? Only the slim is in this price point now. I don't think it's number one either. But um, that's a tough category. I need to put some thought into that a little bit more than just being able to reel something off on the top of my head. Because like I said, this the 1911 doesn't even qualify here anymore. The standard, does it? It's like a 220, 225 pin, right? I believe. So yeah, we have a whole we have a whole conversation to have here. Elemental launching a new notebook by summer. Good. So I took the uh, Proton to Disney World. That cover is awesome. If you like a Tomoe River pocket notebook, man, that thing was in my pocket for two days straight at two parks, and it took a beating and is didn't budge. Very very happy with that cover performance. If you're looking for a Tomoe River pocket notebook. I'll be reviewing that. Um, plastic tip pens is probably up there. Go back and test it on a water ride. I know. Multi pens, ballpoint. Machine pens, that probably needs a big change. I got a lot of work to do. Oh, I also, uh, do I have a pocket notebooks list? I'm definitely open to adding. I used to have that list. Machine pen spoke one through five. I'm definitely putting my own pen on there. I might even put it at number one. What do I have on here right now? Machine pens, TI2 tech liner. That's a hell of a good pen. Shown. That's a hell of a good pen. Sunderland, you know I love that pen. The TI Arto is going to come off for sure. Um, a Johto will probably stay at number five just because it's so expensive. Um, I think the TI Arto will come off of there. The Render K is a great pen. The Render K and the Retract are my two favorite Keras pens. That's a tough list. Yeah, I used to have a pocket notebook list, I thought, Evan. I'll do that again. I'll, I'll re-add that. That'll be a new category. That might be a fun one for next week to add in a new category. I think I'm going to do the low-end fountain pens. Top five fountain pens under 50. I think there's some change here that's worth exploring. Like, I'm pretty sure the Metropolitan is going to come off completely. Um, I think that's probably why I took it off or didn't have it or wasn't like totally sold on the list, Tony, because it's a little bit limited and they're very particular, right? Like, what do you do? You do the field notes stock craft cover notebook? Is that the is that the one? If so, that doesn't rank very highly for me, but it ranks very highly for like what I recommend it. Like you can't use a fountain pen with it. Like, would that be my number one recommendation just because it's popular? Like, how do you decide what's your number one recommended pocket notebook? It's such a particular use case. I'll think about that. 
I think it's worthwhile having a list, but it's a discussion to be had. <clears throat> Kimmy, that's funny. Well, I'm looking at these, like, maybe there's more change than I thought, right? Like, some categories definitely didn't change. But now that I look at this, like, just this under 50 list, I, I almost want to remove the Pilot Metropolitan. I don't know if I will. We'll know tonight when I go home and work on this. Mm. Interesting. For sure. Oh. I just had a brain lock. Do I have an interview today? Tomorrow. Whew. I'm doing the first uh, pen addict interview today for some reason or tomorrow. I was thinking it was today. Good lord. That just I just had a panic attack there. Don't I already I already have it number one. Tony. It might stay. But like I think the 1911 standard goes. Yeah, it's number one. And I think it probably stays number one. All right, cool. That's good stuff. I'm going to do the, uh, the under 50 fountain pens for tomorrow. I'm going to write that down. With this pen. All right, we need Tuesday tool set top five. All right, that'll be out for tonight. Top five retro fifty ones. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a retrospective one of these months. Maybe when it's closer to the end which is sad to say. And I'm going to get Mike. I'm going to see if Mike will do one as well. I'm going to ask him to do it. I haven't asked him yet. I'll ask him. Um, Alexander, are you still in here? I'm ready to turn off the um, six Slimish Shalanas. That's hilarious. I'm ready to turn off the the survey. Um, you know, we'll let it run to the end, to the end of today. How about that? How about like midnight tonight or 10 o'clock tonight? Because I'll put out a last call. Um, I think the data is as, as good as it's going to get. We're not going to get anything that's going to like move things around very much at this point, I don't believe. Right? I think the, the data is pretty, pretty good for what are we close? What did you say? 600? We're probably 700 plus responses. Yeah. I'll put out a last call today um, and we'll do it. Top five original design fountain pens. Do you want to start a fight? Because that's how you start a fight. <laughs> if I put that material out there, all there's going to do is be a fight of what qualifies as original. Like, I'm not going to put myself in that situation. I don't know that I come what I could I don't know that I could answer that accurately. I mean it's a great it's a it's a great thought experiment. Like that's a great topic for this stream. Can anyone come up with one? Pilot vanishing point. What's number 2? They all just ripped off Schaefer. Well then is Schaefer first? All the Pelicans. That's actually pretty fair. Pelican 101. The model, not like schooling you. Like the Pelican 101N. Awesome design. Just what a, what a great pen design that is. That would be on my list. Lamy 2000. Now we're getting somewhere. So we have Pilot Vanishing Point, some Pelican, Lamy 2000, Rotring 600. Maybe it's not as hard as I thought. Like all I see is trouble <laughs> if I make that kind of stand. <laughs> see, now Thunder Viking, I that thought already crossed my head. 
but people will say, oh, I mean, that had that pin hasn't that pin was just announced a few weeks ago, blah blah blah. I mean, it doesn't change the it fits the description of the question though, right? Spoke fountain pen. I'm gonna hurt you, Kimmy. Right? That's an impossible like yeah, this is a good Twitch conversation. I don't know that it's a good article <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I'll think about it though. Like, I would have to just quantify that as top five most unique fountain pen designs, right? <sighs> I don't like to I don't like to get into internet fights and that would definitely cause problems. Boop, if you're still in here, I see your question. I'll have to take a look and just make a make an idea. Yeah, additive pens. That's cool, right? Any more? Yes. Oh, my God. I still kind of want one of those. So stupid. Montegrappa Chaos. <laughs> I'd already forgotten about the Iopena. God, if it wasn't so expensive, I'd buy one. But I guess that's the problem, right? It's ridiculously priced. Mm. Oh, let's uh, let's emote check one more time. Did we get them yet? Any new emotes? <sighs> How do they approve half of my emotes and not the other half? So mad. We're going to have to wrap it up here pretty soon because, man, I got too much to do. But I'm sure they're not approved. Nope. Still pending. Rip. It's the Iopena. Oh, K9 Play. There you go. That's a good one. I like that one. It's the Iopena. I open a. If you're from the Bronx, it's the Visconti. I open a. Clicker. Put your clicker in my eye opener. All right. Oh my God. I used to have that game, Evan. I was a huge Dreamcast guy. Totally had the C Man. That was a effed up game. Effed up all right crazy taxi was one of my favorites i got pretty good at that jet set radio what else is on there shenmue yep what a great system right all right, we could talk about this all day, but I am stressing out about all the stuff I need to do. So I'm gonna go home and ship, and then I'm gonna go home and start writing, and then I'm gonna go pick up the kids, and I'm gonna come home and write the rest of the night. So I'll be online, yell at me on Twitter if you want. I might drop some might drop some Instagrams. I'm not gonna ship Tony anything, just so y'all know. I need to put all these pins back so I don't lose them. Dreamcast on clearance and a bunch of cheap games. Man, that's good stuff. Dreamcast life. I saw the, uh, you know how they build those um, those emulators now with like the 20 Dreamcast games, like the mini emulator thing. That The Dreamcast one, some of those have been pretty good. The Dreamcast one absolutely got murdered in the reviews um, for that, that type of uh, little emulator thing. I never had the Master System. All right. If I don't end this now, I'm never going to end it and I kind of need to end it even though I don't want to. I want to sit here and chat all day and not work, but I'm behind. It's going to be a long week for me, which is good, it means I'm busy. So, no complaints other than me complaining I need to get back to work. So, love you guys. We'll talk on Thursday for sure. We'll see. I don't know where Andrew is to yell at me about talking about knock we'll see if we can talk about knock on thursday i need to talk to jeff today uh another thing on my list so 
Um, maybe by Thursday we'll have the other half of the pin emote so we can all uh, play around with that. And uh, until then, thanks for everything. Bye.